Counter-narrative news continuing with our special series on uh, Walter Rodney. Uh, please do see our first video in this series to just that just gives a very brief political biography of Walter Rodney. But basically, Walter Rodney was born in 1942 in Guyana, in the Caribbean. He was a leading theoretical and uh, activist leader of a revolutionary socialist pan-Africanism or perhaps black Marxism and he was very influential in the general radical socialist oriented black power movement across the world particularly in the west and, uh, and, and North America and the Caribbean and across Africa. He became a part really of the revolutionary leadership of the pan-Africanist movement on the African continent by his position from 1966 to 1974 as an academic at the Dar es Salaam University in Tanzania, but very much being a grassroots revolutionary figure there, also in, in, uh, uh, in, in Jamaica and across the Caribbean. And this section, just wanted to give just a little bit of a, a Walter Rodney's account. So this is all from Walter Rodney Speaks, which is um, published in, uh, forgive me one second, it's published in 1990 by Africa World Press. This is on page two. He talks about some reflections about the Indian and African heritage diasporic communities and Guyana. Walter Rodney was very much a promoter or an advocate of African and Indian and African and Asian unity. And this is particularly interesting in the case of Guyana, considering the big, the, 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 the big communities of uh, African heritage, this, which was a legacy of, uh, of uh, European uh, enslavement of African people and also Indian communities there, which is also a legacy of colonial, another form of uh, a similar type of uh, colonial, basically enslavement of indentured labor, uh, labor there. Uh, so to go to the direct quote, uh, I grew up in a divided society in which the majority of one's day-to-day -day contacts were with one's own ethnic group. There was a certain isolation, but I did not regard it as a condition of hostility. One interrelated with Indian families and with Indians at school. There were just other Guyanese. But there was also that sense that they were out there and, and that there was potential rivalry and that one had to be on guard. The images that were common in the black community were images, for instance, which set to thinking that one must of necessity maintain certain standards because the alternative would be the threat of being overcome by Indians. It was a curious kind of double standard. In one way, it was anti-Indian. In another sense, it raised the Indians to a position of the ideal almost. Black people had a way of saying, you see those Indian students, they go to school and they go back home and help their parents. So you must help your parents. You see that Indian fellow over there? He isn't spending time, his, uh, he isn't spending his time around some jukebox joint. He's studying hard. So one must study. It was in a sense competitive and contradictory, but it was almost an idealization. I don't think that's really true, in fact, about Indian dedication, solidarity and that sort of thing. Black people were always saying, we're so divided that Indians all move together. Or, on the cultural levels, level, Indians still have their names, still have their clothes. We don't have anything. End of quote. This is really interesting because a lot of these notions actually still continue today. One often hears from um, some members of the African heritage community and the African Caribbean community in, in London and in England, that they still perceive Indians to be quote unquote more cohesive and together and operating together. And, and Rodney is right that often it's a false perception, that often this isn't the case at all. And uh, these anxieties and divisions and insecurities are constantly played upon and increased by British uh, colonial policy, historically in Guyana and across the Caribbean, across the African uh, and Asian continents as well, and also in the internal colonies, quote unquote, in Britain, which have working class uh, African and uh, Indian heritage, working class people in them. Following the line of Walter Rodney and very much the uh, leaderships uh, and theoretical and practical revolutionary frameworks like, like them, it's very important on understanding through an anti-colonial counter white supremacist working class framework which Walter Rodney very much promoted a unity between the African communities and Indian communities for this for their for their same class interests against a common enemy of white supremacy and colonialism. Thank you very much.